Hey boys and girls, it is Wednesday afternoon and I am going to be reading to you another couple of chapters from the BFG. And yesterday um, we found that our character Sophie barely escaped um, with her life by hiding in a snoz cumber, which we've discovered is a disgusting kind of food that the BFG eats since he does not eat human beans. Um, so today we're going to kind of move forward with a couple of chapters. So I've got my nice comfy chair. I've got those who know me, my yummy Sonic drink, um, supporting my local food place. And my daughter's just told me I look like Marty McFly. Um, so some of your parents may know who that is. So anyway, we're going to start reading today, and this, as I told you yesterday, is hilarious what we read about today. So buckle your seatbelts, and let's get going. This one's called Frob Scottle and Whiz Poppers. By now, Sophie was beginning to feel not only extremely hungry, but very thirsty as well. Had she been at home, she would have finished her breakfast long ago. Are you sure there's nothing else to eat around here except these disgusting smelling snores cumbers? She asked. Not even a fizz winkle, answered the big friendly giant. In that case, may I please have a little water? She said. Water, said the BFG frowning mightily. What is water? We drink it, Sophie said. What do you drink? Frob Scottle, announced the BFG. All giants is drinking frob scottle. Is it as nasty as your snores, Cumbers? Sophie asked. Nasty? cried the BFG. Never is it nasty. Frob scottle is sweet and jumbly. He got up from his chair and went to a second huge cupboard. He opened it and took out a glass bottle that, missed, that must have been about six foot tall. The liquid inside it was a pale green, and the bottle was half full. Here is Frob Scottle, he cried, holding the bottle up proud and high, as though it contained some rare wine. Delumptious fizzy Frob Scottle, he shouted. He gave it a shake, and the green stuff began to fizz like mad. But look, it's fizzing the wrong way. Sophie cried, and indeed it was. The bubbles, instead of traveling upward and bursting on the surface, were shooting downwards and bursting at the bottom. A pale green frothy fizz was forming at the bottom of the bottle. So think about this, boys and girls. If your parents have ever let you have um, any kind of soda, like Coke or Sprite or 7-Up or Dr. Pepper. And when you pour it into a cup, you see all the bubbles in the fizz come up to the top and making a foam. So the bubbles are all lifting up. But in Frobscottle, what Sophie noticed is when she looked at the bottle, all the bubbles in the foam were going down instead of up. What on earth is you meaning the wrong way? asked the BFG. In our fizzy drinks, Sophie said, the bubbles always go up and burst at the top. Upwards is the wrong way, cried the BFG. You mustn't ever be having the bubbles going upwards. That's the most flush bunking rubbish I ever is hearing. Why do you say that? Sophie asked. You was asking me why? cried the BFG, waving the enormous bottle around as though he were conducting an orchestra. You is actually meaning to tell me you cannot see why it is a scrawny mistake to have the bubbles flying up instead of down? You said it was flush bunking. Now you're saying it's scrawty. Which is it? Sophie asked politely. Both, cried the BFG. It is a flush bunking and a scrawny mistake to let the bubbles go upwards. If you can't see why, you must be as quacky as a duck hound. By Ringo, your head must be so full of scrog squinkers and buzz wanglers. I is a frittered if I know how you can even think at all. 
Why shouldn't the bubbles go upwards? Sophie asked. I will explain, said the BFG. But tell me first, what name is you calling your frob scottle by? One name we call it is Coke, Sophie said. Another is Pepsi. There's lots of them. And the bubbles is all going up? They all go up, Sophie said. Catastrophous, cried the BFG. Upwards bubbles is a catastrophous, disastrophous. Will you please tell me why, Sophie said. If you will listen carefully, I will try to explain, said the BFG. But your brain is so full of bug whiffles, I doubt you will ever understand. I'll do my best, Sophie said patiently. Very well, then. When you is drinking this cokey drink of yours, said the BFG, is it going straight down into your tummy? Is that right? Or is that left? It's right, Sophie said. And the bubbles is also going into your tummy, right? Or left? Right again, Sophie said. And the bubbles is fizzing upwards? Of course, Sophie said. Which means, said the BFG, that they will all come swish whiffling up your throat and out of your mouth and make a foulsome belchy burp. That is often true, Sophie said. But what's wrong with a little burp now and again? It's sort of fun. Burping is filthsome, the BFG said. Us giants is never doing it. But with your drink, Sophie said, what was it you called it? Frob Scottle, said the BFG. With Frob Scottle, Sophie said, the bubbles in your tummy will be going downwards. And that could have a far nastier result. Why nasty? asked the BFG, frowning. Because, Sophie said, blushing a little, if they go down instead of up, and they'll be coming out somewhere else with even a louder and ruder noise. A whiz popper, cried the BFG, beaming at her. Us giants is making whiz poppers all the time. Whiz popping is a sign of happiness. It is music in our ears. You surely is not telling me that a little whiz popping is forbidden among human beings. It is considered extremely rude, Sophie said. But you is whiz popping, is you not now and again? asked the BFG. Everyone is whiz popping, if that's what you call it, Sophie said. Kings and queens are whiz popping. Presidents are whiz popping. Glamorous film stars are whiz popping. Little babies are whiz popping. But where I come from, it is not polite to talk about it. Ridiculous, said the BFG. If everyone is making whiz poppers, then why not talk about it? We is now having a swiggle of this delicious frob scottle, and you will see the happy results. The BFG shook the bottle vigorously. The pale green stuff fizzed and bubbled. He removed the cork and took a tremendous gurgling swig. It's glummy, he cried. I love it. For a few moments, the big friendly giant stood quite still and a look of absolute ecstasy began to spread over his long wrinkly face. Then, suddenly... The heavens opened, and he let fly with a series of the loudest and rudest noises Sophie had ever heard in her life. They reverberated around the walls of the cave like thunder, and the glass jars rattled on the shelves. But most astonishing of all, the force of the explosion actually lifted the enormous giant clear off his feet like a rocket. Whoopee! he cried, and when he came down to earth again, now that is whiz popping for you. Sophie burst out laughing. She couldn't help it. Have yourself some, cried the BFG, tipping the neck of the enormous bottle towards her. 
Don't you have a cup? Sophie said. No cups, only bottle. Sophie opened her mouth and very gently the BFG took the bottle forward and poured some of the fabulous frob scottle down her throat. And oh gosh, how delicious it was. It was sweet and refreshing. It tasted of vanilla and cream with just the faintest trace of raspberries on the edge of the flavor. And the bubbles were wonderful. Sophie could actually feel them bouncing and bursting all around her tummy. It was an amazing sensation. It felt as though hundreds of tiny people were dancing a jig inside her and tickling her with their toes. It was lovely. It's lovely, she said. Just wait, the BFG said, flapping his ears. Sophie could feel the bubbles traveling lower and lower and lower in her tummy. And then suddenly, inevitably, the explosion came. The trumpet sounded and she too made the walls of the cave ring with the sound of music and thunder. Bravo, shouted the BFG, waving the bottle. You is very good for a beginner. Let's have some more. What did you think about that? And I'm glad my bubbles are going up. Journey to Dream Country. After the mad frob scottle party was over, Sophie settled herself again on top of the enormous table. You is feeling better now, asked the big friendly giant. Much better, thank you, Sophie said. Whenever I is feeling a little bit scrotty, the BFG said, a few gollops of frob scottle is always making me hopscotchy again. I must say it's quite an experience, Sophie said. It's a rat whizzler, the BFG said. It's gloriumptious. He turned away and strode across the cave and picked up his dream-catching net. I is galloping off now, he said, to catch some more whoopsy whiffling dreams for my collection. I is doing this every day without missing. Is you wishing to come with me? Not me, thank you very much, Sophie said. Not with those other giants lurking outside. I is snuggling you very cozy into the pocket of my waistcoat, the BFG said. Then no one is seeing you. Before Sophie could protest, he had picked her up off the table and popped her into the waistcoat pocket. There was plenty of room in there. Is you wishing for a little hole to peep out from? He asked her. There's one here already, she said. She had found a small hole in the pocket, and when she put one eye close to it, she could see out very well indeed. She watched the BFG as he bent down and filled his suitcase with empty glass jars. He closed the lid, picked up the suitcase in one hand, took the pole with the net on the other end into his hand, and marched towards the entrance of the cave. As soon as he was outside, the BFG set off across the great, hot, yellow wasteland where the blue rocks lay and the dead trees stood and where all the other giants were skulking about. Sophie, squatting low on her heels in the pocket of her leather waistcoat, had one eye glued to the little hole. She saw the group of enormous giants about 300 yards ahead. Hold your breaths! The BFG whispered down to her, Cross your figglers. Here we go. We is going right past all those other giants. Is you seeing what whopping great one, the one nearest to us? I see him, Sophie whispered back, quivering. That is the horriblest of them all. And the biggest of them all. He is called the flesh lump eating giant. I don't want to hear about him, Sophie said. He is 54 feet high, the BFG said softly as he jogged along. And he is swalloping human beings like they is sugar lumps, two or three at a time. You're making me nervous, Sophie said. 
I is nervous myself, the BFG whispered. I always gets as jumpsy as a jock hopper when the flesh lump eating giant is around. Keep away from him, Sophie pleaded. He is he is galloping easily to a thing. Not possible, the BFG answered. He is galloping easily two times as quicksy as me. Shall we turn back? Sophie said. Turning back is worse, the BFG said. If they is seeing me running away, they is all giving chase and throwing rocks. They would never eat you, though, would they? Sophie asked. Giants is never guzzling other giants, the BFG said. They is fighting and quarreling a lot with each other, but never guzzling. Human beans is more tasty to them. The giants had already spotted the BFG, and all heads were turned, watching him as he jogged forward. He was aiming to pass well to the right of the group. Through her little peephole, Sophie saw the flesh lump eating giant moving over to intercept them. He didn't hurry. He just loped over casually to a point where the BFG would have to pass. The others loped after him. Sophie counted nine of them all together and she recognized the blood bottler in the middle of them. They were bored. They had nothing to do until nightfall. There was an air of menace about them as they loped slowly across the plain with long lolloping strides heading straight for the BFG. Here comes the runty one, boomed the flesh lump eater. Ho, ho there, runty one. Where's you splatch winkling away to in such a hefty hurry? He shot out an enormous arm and grabbed the BFG by the hair. The BFG didn't struggle. He simply stopped and stood quite still and said, Be so kind as to letting go of my hair, flesh lump eater. The flesh lump eater released him and stepped back a pace. The other giant stood around waiting for the fun to start. Now then, you little grob squiffler, boomed the flesh lump eater. We is all of us wanting to know where you is galloping off to every day in the daytime. Nobody ought to be galloping off to anywhere until it is dark. The human beings could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt. And we is not wanting that to happen, is we not? We is not, shouted the other giants. Go back to your cave, runty one. I is not galloping to any human being country, the BFG said. I is going to other places. I is thinking, said the flesh lump eater, that you is catching human beings and keeping them as pets. Right you is, cried the blood bottler. Just now I is hearing him chittering away to one of them in his cave. You are welcome to go and search my cave from frack to bunt, the BFG answered. You can go looking into every crook and nanny. There is no human bean or stringy bean or runner bean or jelly bean or any other bean in my cave. Sophie crouched still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. She hardly dared to breathe. She was terrified she might sneeze. The slightest sound or movement would give her away. Through the tiny peephole, she watched the giants clustering around the poor BFG. How revolting they were. All of them had piggy little eyes and enormous mouths with thick sausage lips. When the flesh lump eater was speaking, she got a glimpse of his tongue. It was jet black, like a slab of black steak. Every one of them was more than twice as tall as the BFG. Suddenly, the flesh lump eater shot out two enormous hands and grabbed the BFG around his waist, and he tossed him high in the air and shouted, Catch him, man hugger! The man hugger caught him, and the other giants spread out quickly in a large circle, each giant about 20 yards from his neighbor, preparing for the game they were about to play. Now the man-hugger threw the BFG high and far, shouting, Catch him, bone cruncher! The bone cruncher ran forward and caught the tumbling BFG and immediately swung him up again. Catch him, child chewer, he shouted. 
And so it went on. The giants were playing ball with the BFG, vying with each other to see who would throw him the highest. Sophie dug her nails into the sides of the pocket, trying to prevent herself from tumbling out when she was upside down. She felt as though she were a barrel going over the Niagara Falls. And all the time, there was a fearful danger that one of the giants would fail to catch the BFG, and he would go crashing into the ground. Catch him, meat dripper! Catch him, gizzard gulper! Catch him, maid masher! Catch him, blood bottler! Catch him! Catch him! Catch him! In the end, they got bored with the game. They dumped the poor BFG on the ground. He was dazed and shattered. They gave him a few kicks and shouted, Run, you little runt! Let us be seeing how fast you is galloping now! The BFG did run. What else could he do? The giants picked up rocks and hurled them after him. He managed to dodge them. Ruddy little runt, they shouted. Troggy little twit. Shrivelly little shrimp. Mucky little midget. Here's a picture of them tossing him around. Squaggy little squib, grobby little grub. At last the BFG got clear of them all and another couple of minutes the pack of giants was out of sight over the horizon. Sophie popped her head up from the pocket. I didn't like that, she said. Phew, said the BFG. Phew and far between. They is a nasty crotching mood today, was they not? I am sorry you was not having such a whirly gig time. No worse than you, Sophie said. Would they ever really hurt you? I is never trusting them, the BFG said. How do they actually catch the humans they eat? Sophie asked. They is just sticking an arm through a bedroom window and snitching them from their beds, the BFG said. Like you did to me. Ah, but I isn't eating you, the BFG said. How else do they catch them, Sophie asked. Sometimes, the BFG said, they is swimming in from the sea like fishies, with only their heads showing above the water. And then out comes a big hairy hand and grabbles someone off the beach. Children as well. Often chiddlers, the BFG said. Little chiddlers who is building sandcastles on the beach. That is who the swimming ones are after. Little childers is not so tough to eat as old grandmamas. So says the chow-chewing giant. As they talked, the BFG was galloping fast over the land. Sophie was standing right up in his waistcoat pocket now and holding onto the edge with both hands. Her head and shoulders were in the open and the wind was blowing in her hair. How else do they catch people? she asked. All of them is having their own special way of catching the human beings, the BFG said. The meat-dripping giant is preferring to pretend he is in a big tree growing in the park. He's standing in the park in the dusky evening, and he is holding great big branches over his head, and there he is waiting until some happy families is coming to have a picnic under the tree. The meat-dripping giant is watching them as they lay out their little picnic, but in the end, it is the meat-dripper who is having the picnic. It's so awful, Sophie cried. The gizzard gulping giant is a city lover, the BFG went on. The gizzard gulpler is lying high up in between the roofs of houses in the cities. He's lying there snuggy as a sniggler and watching the human beings walking on the streets below. And when he sees one that looks like it's a wopsy good flavor, he grabs it. He's simply reaching down and snitching it off the street like a monkey taking a nut. He says it's nice to be able to pick and choose what you is having for your supper. He says it's like choosing from a menu. Don't people see him doing that? Sophie asked. Never is they seeing him. Do not forget it is dusky dark at this time. Also, the gizzard gulper is a very fast arm. His arm is going up and down quicker than squinkers. But if all of these people are disappearing every night, surely there's some sort of an outcry, Sophie said. The world is a whopping big place, the BFG said. It has a hundred different countries. The giants is clever. 
They is careful not to be skiddling off to some country too often. They is always switch fiddling around. Even so, Sophie said, do not forget, the BFG said, the human beings is disappearing everywhere all the time, even without the giants is guzzling them up. Human beings is killing each other much quicker than giants is doing it. But they don't eat each other, Sophie said. Giant isn't eating each other either, the BFG said. Nor is giants killing each other. Giants is not very lovely, but they is not killing each other. Nor is a crocodile dilly killing other crocodile dillies. Nor is kitty cats killing other kitty cats. But they kill mice, Sophie said. Ah, but they is not killing their own kind, the BFG said. Human beings is the only animal that's killing their own kind. Don't poisonous snakes kill each other, Sophie asked. She was searching desperately for another creature that behaved as badly as humans. Even poisonous snakes is never killing each other, the BFG said. Nor is the most fearsome creatures like tigers and rhinoceroses. None of them is ever killing their own kind. Has you ever thought about that? Sophie kept silent. I is not understanding human beings at all, the BFG said. You is a human being and you is saying it is grizzling and horrigous for giants to be eating human beings, right or left? Right, Sophie said. But human beings are squishing each other all the time, the BFG said. They are shooting guns and going up in aeroplanes and dropping their bombs on each other's heads every week. Human beings is always killing other human beings. He was right. Of course he was right, and Sophie knew it. She was beginning to wonder whether humans were actually any better than giants. Even so, she said, defending her own race, I think it's rotten that these foul giants should go off every night to eat human beings. Humans has never done them any harm. That is what the little piggy wiggy is saying every day, the BFG answered. He is saying, I has never done any harm to the human being, so why should he be eating me? Oh dear, Sophie said. The human beings is making rules to suit themselves, the BFG went on, but the rules they is making do not suit the little piggy wiggies. Am I right or left? Right, Sophie said. Giants is also making rules. Their rules is not suiting the human beings. Everybody's making his own rules to suit himself. But you don't like it that those beastly giants are eating humans every night, do you? Sophie asked. I do not, the BFG answered firmly. One right is not making two lefts. Is you quite cozy down there in my pocket? I'm fine, Sophie said. Then suddenly, once again, the BFG went into that magical top gear of his. He began hurtling forward with phenomenal leaps. His speed was unbelievable. The landscape became blurred, and again, Sophie had to duck down out of the whistling gale to save her head from being blown off of her shoulders. She crouched in the pocket and listened to the wind screaming past. It came knifing in through the tiny peepholes in the pocket and swooshed around like a hurricane. But this time the BFG didn't stay in Top Gear long. It seemed as though he had some barrier to cross, a vast mountain, perhaps, or an ocean, or a great desert. But having crossed it, he once again slowed down to his normal gallop, and Sophie was able to pop her head up and look out at the view. She noticed immediately that they were now in an altogether paler country. The sun had disappeared above a film of vapor. The air was becoming cooler every minute. The land was flat and treeless, and there seemed to be no color in it at all. Every minute the mist became thicker. The air became colder still, and everything became paler and paler, until soon there was nothing but gray and white all around them. They were in a country of swirling mist and ghostly vapors. There was some sort of grass underfoot, but it was not green. It was ashy gray. There was no sign of a living creature and no sound at all except for the soft thud of the BFG's footsteps as he hurtled on through the fog. Suddenly he stopped. 
We is here at last, he announced. He bent down and lifted Sophie from his pockets and put her on the ground. She was still in her nightie and her feet were bare. She shivered and stared around her at the swirling mist and the ghostly vapors. Where are we? she asked. We is in dream country, the BFG said. This is where all dreams is beginning. And tomorrow when we read, we'll find out exactly what's involved in catching a dream. I see the sun is coming out outside. Hope you guys are enjoying a great day with your family at home. And we will see you again soon.